Exciting news, everybody. So, Will is away. Ronan is away. <laughs> Exciting news. I don't know if Ronan's away. away, is he? He is, no, he is. We is tried he? him. No, he's away. <laughs> oh, we tried him. We tried him. <laughs> Will is away. Ronan's away. Kenny Cunningham wouldn't do it. John Doe is away. Redacted is away. Jane Doe's away. We talked to some people. They weren't around. Colin Boog is here, everyone. Hello. There I was, um, stuffing my face in my stir fry at home, and I was listening to the start of the news round, as I always do. Oof. And then I'm getting lip. A lot of this. For people who are just listening, I'm doing the mouth version here, with the hands. We, Ger Gilroy isn't, it was, isn't telling you what to do here. You can look at us when you talk. Yeah, we have it's a policy. Okay. That I, that's actually, do you know what? No, yeah. I was in, Ger I was Gilroy in isn't seat. in your ear. Telling you, look at the camera, seat. look at the camera. 12 and a half hours ago, in this very seat. Yeah. And we're very, as you know, Joel, because you watch OTBM every yeah. morning, you look I look straight down the lens yeah. every time. But it's actually so freeing. Can I just... Turn yeah. my chair oh, to absolutely. You. Shit. Oh, wow. This is yeah. incredible. This is like, this is Don't like shift too much. I mean, you are still on camera, but like, you oh, know. But they can see this profile because actually today they would have seen that profile with the quiz. Thanks for having me on. It was a That's, raging success. Th that wasn't until Friday. <laughs> yeah, Friday, yeah. <laughs> Who do you think will win on Friday? <laughs> oh, it's, it's so hard to call. It's, uh, it's, still going. Job. it's still going. But uh, no, this is a pleasure. This must be what um, John Frusciante felt like when he joined Red Hot Chili Peppers because he was a fan of the band, as you know. And then he joined, uh -huh. and it was a dream come true. And how does it? And feel? the comparisons are very direct. <laughs> how does it feel? Pretty good, like it's pretty surreal. It doesn't really feel like we're on air, you know. It just feels like a nice conversation. This, I would say, is the first time me and you have been. I don't even know you on air together. <laughs> and I've been here nearly four years. Yeah. I've barely looked you in the eye. We just, uh, I think they've kept me away. Me and Arthur stepped out. But it is mad, actually. It's been a then. pandemic, to be fair. Uh, we had two missed years. Yes. Um, first time on got, air together, though. Yeah, you got married. I got married. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of life landmarks here. <laughs> so it's great. I was just uh, pointing out to Arthur there because people will have obviously seen it on video that it became a point where this was such a one on one conversation that the video was just the two of you, the side profiles of both of you. I don't you think I've ever been in this studio at all. I've it's seen him the other time out there, but now, I didn't think you were real. We're on air here together. We're, 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 we're actually on here, so we need to press on. Oh, we, I could do this all day. I know, I yeah. know, I know, I know. So uh, to completely come clean, I would usually be in a bit earlier today and myself and the boys would usually chat about topics. That hasn't happened. Traffic in Dublin, if you were in Dublin this evening afternoon, was uh, fairly miserable. So we're going to go a little bit by the seat of our pants. Lots of emails in, which is uh, good. So uh, we did ask Colm if there was anything he wanted to discuss as guest. So this is the most preparation that's been done. Uh, you, you, you mentioned... We'll give you one of these at the top and then we'll get into some other emails. Uh, you want to talk about football goal nets... They used to have their own character. You asked the question, if you could be genuinely world-class at any sport, what would it be and why? And you said, if you have Christmas to yourself, what three sporting events are you watching back and why? I'll let you pick up one of those. Okay, thank you. And then we'll uh, react accordingly. Hit us. What are you going okay, with? Okay, so the middle one there, what sport would you be world-class at if you had any choice of sport? So we brought this up very much like a slight tangent, but in real life, i.e. in a pub. Yeah among friends. Okay. I said boxing, and I'll tell you why. If you are world class at boxing, if you can avoid getting hit, and you are scintillating skills wise, you probably only have to work maybe once a year, once every 18 months, you're getting big bucks if you can talk on the mic, and you leave unscathed, versus say a footballer who trains five days a week and plays at the weekend, or a golfer who travels all around the world all the time, or a tennis player who's away for about 45 weeks of the year. A boxer can go missing for six to nine months at a time. Wouldn't so, hear from the boxer, then they come back with a vengeance, everybody takes notice of them, they're unbelievable in the ring when it really comes to it, Saturday night, everybody's watching them. A couple more million in the bank, mm -hmm. hibernate. I think that's one of the worst answers I've ever heard. What? Is, is, what? That, is that a <laughs> fundamental misunderstanding know? of what a boxer does? This well, is that, a dreadful, you dreadful don't get choice. Hit. That's I'm on about a boxer, there's not, there's not, there's not, not a boxer hit. who doesn't get hit. Who? Do you want to be Floyd, Floyd Mayweather? Mayweather? So that's what you want? You want to be Floyd Mayweather? Well, not really, to be honest. Not specifically Floyd Mayweather, but I would like his skills because he famously, pretty boy Floyd, does not get hit. Everything. So if you have an ability oh. not to get oh. punched in the face... Everything that goes with boxing is awful. Why? Yeah, it's not No, no, I'm not, not talking about the politics about, of boxing. I'm on about... No, I mean, your, your life is a boxer, so you've got to train incessantly even though you're saying I'm gone rogue. You, 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 you have to train. That is Mads, a fundamental don't. misunderstanding don't. of what boxers do. What do you think boxers do in between fights? Well, I think they maintain fitness, but not to the intense degree that a Premier League <laughs> footballer would all year round. You have to inflict I, pain on another human being routinely. If you're comfortable with that, that's fine. I mean, it's an insight. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Uh, um, the the pre-fight nonsense. 
But if you enjoy that, the pageantry of it, see, I wouldn't. It's performative. Yeah. Would you enjoy that crap? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I would. I always think, right, when people give out about boxers who are like, you know, full of themselves and they they don't stop talking or whatever, and they're annoying to be around. I find that very entertaining. That's mm. the reason I watch sport. Sport is essentially escapism. Like that's really all it is mm -hmm. from the drudgery of life. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's entertaining me, I'll watch them. And if they're very skillful at what they do, i.e. they don't get hit and they can punch well, and then they can hibernate for six to nine months. That's my dream life. I can do whatever I want for six to nine months. But would you not but want you're to not doing whatever you want? Like you the, the only person who ever did that was Ricky Hatton, and it <laughs> ended his career. I'm not like, talking about. Still but you see, now. what the, the problem here is, right? But okay, but it ended. Is you're all thinking? Years. Years. I mean, he still has you're all thinking now. of examples of actual boxers, right? I'm on about the dream world scenario for me because this is all it is like. This is just total hypothetical. What would you choose? But sure, as you your can't just have sport. a hypothetical without us uh, as picking your holes in sport. It. But do you not think there's the uh, example you're picking something there? Because he went off. He did. He know, took time off. Real time off. And I went. Nobody else does. Went badly, yeah. But yeah. you could take if you stay if you maintain a level of fitness, you don't have to be getting hit in the face in that six to nine months. I'm saying six to nine months is just an odd punt. Here and there, uh, right? What do you want to do with it's your time far. off? Yeah. What do I want to do? With your time off? Do whatever I want because I have all the money in the world. What do you want to do? Travel. Ah, oh, for God's sake. Travel. Enjoy your myself. mind. Not work. Not work. Would you not want to pick a sport that you adore and you love and you get to do it routinely? Yeah, because I it do just enjoy, like I, you just in, want the money. In this, in this scenario... Like, you're just like, I just my dream sport is to like win the lotto. You know this, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you're, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. I mean, that's, that's kind of the, the side effect. But the point is that I'm extremely skillful at boxing. Yeah, but not something you get to do very often. But that's good because I don't also want to hurt people. I'm See, just good at I can't help in this, <laughs> this world, right? I can't help it that I'm good at boxing. I was just born this way, right? Sure. And I'm able to beat people with my fists and I'm able to avoid getting hit. They're my two big skills in life. Okay. And my third skill is the ability to earn money. And my fourth skill is the ability to take half the year off. And that for me is a dream world. Okay. I think it's safe to say you've convinced Nobody. But that's okay. That's what that I'm is okay. For, isn't it? Does anyone have a strong leaning towards what they would like to be world class at, sports wise? Like football. <laughs> like I don't have an I don't have an interesting answer to this. Yeah. I feel like football would gives you between it being like the the biggest sport in the world, being world class at it, despite our earlier conversation, certainly means more. I would think. Uh, you know, in terms of your uh, what you've done. Uh, to get to that level and I think you can achieve things for a team because like if, you, if I was a world class player would I be doing things for my country while also doing things for a club I don't care as much about and earning millions for it you get to do a bit of, bit of both you're also like I mean you can earn enough money that you are more or less done you can not work again after you're like 35 but you do work pretty hard up until that point mm. okay football's yeah. by far and away my favourite sport easily my fear if I was ever a professional footballer that I would stop loving the sport because I have to do it every single day. I'm going into training. And you're not like kicking the ball around with your buddies. You're having to do like repetitive, mundane drills. I feel like you'd understand and I feel the game I more lose, and I develop the even bigger it. appreciation for it. As we see in like intelligent, uh, you were talking about Wayne Rooney's uh, column in the... Uh, in the paper review this week and like what comes across with Rain Rooney is that he was as much as a great footballer was also a really big fan of football and I think and that hasn't been lost he's heart, actually heart developed broken, even more interest in it heartbroken to give up I think yeah as well what would appeal to me I'd be torn between football and golf so football was a sport I played growing up loved it and golf I've come to latterly love it and play it like the thing about football is the highs so if you're world class, like to walk out in a stadium full of people weekly, twice a week, to have these amazing moments, these amazing shots of adrenaline. I love the lifestyle. I love the idea of driving in and training for two hours a day and then checking again. Sleep as part of your job. Still think you have a lot of free time. Uh, the only thing that would sway me towards golf is that I could play golf until my 70s quite competitively, you know? Because I think if you love doing something and you're world class at it, why would you not want to just do lots of it? Like I, I do... I understand your logic for sure. Man, I, I think after two years of that, I'd just be like sitting around. I was going to say depressed. I don't want to I, I misuse that word. But effectively, I think I'd be in a bad place. Why? Because I'd just be bored. Like, let's go travel to somewhere else and stay in another five-star oh, hotel. That's one thing I would do. I'm not saying that's but, all I would do. But, but as opposed to, like, look at Messi's career. Mm -hmm. Constant. He went through, like, there was a, 
period. I mean, last season, you know, mm. Messi's having down times. Three, four years ago at Argentina, wasn't going well. He walked away. I'm not, every every profession is going to have their yeah. their uh, their down times, like. But the only thing, like as I say, football is my favorite sport, and the only reason I would choose boxing ahead of it is that you can do less in boxing for a bigger reward if you're world class. And I think the money. I don't think a lot of people so, would admit yeah. that that is dream scenario for a lot of people because you do have you have to work so hard to get there in the first place. So a bit like I'm not just walking into it. Like I'm I'm doing all the work beforehand. And the payoff is right there when you're actually professional. That the payoff is right then and there. Mm. And you can be set up for life within three or four fights if you're world class at a young age. And then you can actually do what you want after that with no damage done to you. Whereas with football, it's, it's just the repetitive day-to-day -day slog. I would worry that I'd lose my love of it. David Bentley style, 29 years of age, walks away from the game. No. What an odd example. I just we spoke to David Bentley, didn't we, years yeah, ago? He was in a Bentley, pub yeah. in Malaga or somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, like, I got to, the, 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 the thought of, though, of winning the Masters, it'd be... Yeah, but then you're something. away, like, every single yeah, week. You just slog, you're away from home. You only need to play 12 See, that's weeks the, a year. But that's a big... You, would 12, you? 12, 13 weeks a year. Tiger played 12, 13, 14 weeks a year. You can pick your own ske uh, schedule. I suppose, I suppose you, in, in this scenario, we're the best of the best, aren't we? Yeah, yeah that's right. Okay, yeah. Because, I mean, the slog, the travel slog comes up I think with in all of those touring sports sure it's impossible yeah, as much that. as it sounds fine you do that 34 35 weeks a year yeah I think it just kills you after a while and especially with golf where your career isn't 10 to 15 years it's 20 to 30 I years need, yeah. you need a private jet for yeah. sure <laughs> minimum I'd like to win most is Wimbledon Centre Court just because an Irish person winning Wimbledon would be incredible. Yeah. I feel like that would has be lost a lot of its incredible. luster in well, why? recent years, hasn't it? Why? I don't think Wimbledon means as much as it used to. I think there's a... I don't know whether it's the fact that, like, there was the... something being... The, we talked about this before, actually, the sporting calendar being divided up and that Wimbledon was all it was for two weeks and the Open was another week and, you know, it was the BBC calendar almost that, that we grew up with and it became super important. I feel that Wimbledon is now an event that's pretty big in a fractured world where people will still just watch football or just watch GA or watch whatever and then... That's because you're over I can't remember the last time I've watched the Wimbledon final in uh, men's anyway on the Sunday because it's a big part of the GA season and I'm generally watching that, you know? But that, would, that would have always clashed, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, don't, I, don't, just, I don't think the GA, for example, in late January was as, or late July was as can't miss as it is now. The whole, whole season matters more, you know? I would have thought that's a bigger issue of being overexposed to sport. Because it's yeah, there, yeah. every it's sport that you ever want is there for anymore. you all the time, which isn't actually necessarily a good thing. Yeah. You know, when it's hidden away from you for a while, it's good. Arthur Gundry Ed, what sport are you going to be world class at? Final word on this. Do you know, it's funny, I, I don't even play it. I think I'd go with you at golf. I think to be in that company, in that Irish thing, oh, something I like about that McElroy, Lowry, Harrington yeah. triumvirate. You're in that kind of mix. You seem to be having a lot of fun. Exactly, it's great. And you're. I know that you get the, the, the boot, like you'd hear the snippets of where Shane Lowry or Owen McElroy is this week or he's talking from his house in Florida or whatever. And it's yeah. just like, that's enough. Do you right think that automatically lets you into the crew? I do, would you? And I'd be good. <laughs> but you're world class. Just because you're Irish. Yeah. You win that Masters first. The, one of the appeals of golf is it doesn't have the toxicity of football. You would be exposed to some grim aspects of humanity as a footballer. And you wouldn't footballer. be with golf. No. There's different types of grim aspects of humanity, I would say. Sure. But Jim Nance in the shed. Is not, is, not, is not quite the same as like rival fans telling you they want to kill your family. It's not Jim Nance I'd have a problem with. What's your man? Who's the, who's the guy who actually is there with the jacket? Fred Ridley. Is that now who who was it traditionally? Who was the guy who was there for like fifty years? The Augusta guy. Uh, Billy Billy Payne. <clears throat> Billy Payne, I think. Billy Payne gave it the old Tiger Woods. We're so disappointed in you. Yeah, the shtick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. No. I'd be great. I'd be friends with Tiger. Really. Although you, yeah. do you know what? There's a lot of there's a lot of. Uh, it depends whether you'd be into the kind of highfalutin kind of like uh, cocktail hour sort of mingling and uh, you know uh, you know signing business deals over a drink. Oh, and yeah. uh, and a cigar, because that, that you have a lot of opportunity for that in golf. But that that would put a lot of people off, I would say. Sean O'Gorman emailed in. Apologies, I know you've no idea where we're going, and you guys have barely glanced at these emails. So just roll with the punches. Uh, so he's been listening to slight tangent. How in the name of God do you manage to fit everything in? Joe once said there isn't anything on Netflix he hasn't watched. How do you watch every sport, research it, have it ready for radio every evening and weekend, and then find time to watch TV? Thanks, Sean O'Gorman. 
I think the truth is we would all spend too much of our time watching sport, looking at screens. That's the short version. Yeah. It takes up most of your time. Yeah. It does. The, like, it's not, in being serious, like, it's it's like, yeah. it's not a, I don't want to stress the fact of it being a job, but like, we have a low quality of life. You're kind of constantly uh, on, like you're con- in some way or another. You're kind of con- one of us. I'd say is always working. Yeah, in some capacity. Well, in- you need to stop WhatsApping at bloody nine a.m. in the morning. Well, look, oh, he can't help himself. That's a different I, thing. It's a I different could, conversation. I could genuinely <laughs> talk about this for hours. You see, I know Mick's answer because I think you are the person who I know mo- who like loves sport more than anybody else I know. Is you? You would watch every sport. See, under I the don't sun. know if that's everyone seems to have that impression on me. But anyway, Morris well, Brosnan. I don't know how. But, to do it. Yeah, Morris Brosnan. We know. Is Morris Brosnan would watch. So I nearly watches everything. He's triple Always. screening. I nearly <laughs> ruling you out. Afternoon at four o'clock. <laughs> I'm nearly ruling you out of this question. So it would be for Joe and Arthur. Would be like, do you find it tough to watch sport when you're not working, or do you still enjoy it as much as you used to before you got into the media industry? <sighs> I still enjoy it, but what I find from especially the last while is that I don't consume as much around it. Mm. Won't listen to many podcasts. Won't Do you switch off? Watch it. Yeah, I just because it's it's kind of it's like doubling up. You know what I mean? Like you'll be here for an hour listening to a football show. I can't go and listen to another football podcast no. after that. It's like come on. Yeah, it's I just feel like, so that's cut off. But I'll still watch the sport. Incredibly guilty if I don't watch an important match in my off time. Yeah. Like incredibly guilty. But like is that really guilty should. based on your job? Or My job, on... and I have, it's a privilege as well. Like, so I should actually like a lot of people would want to do it. So I should really watch it. But then at the same time, I'm like, ah, oh, I can't have like a close-minded world where I'm only watching and taking in sport. I need to see other aspects of life. So that like like trying to manage your time at weekends, especially when you're lucky enough to work Monday to Friday in the sporting world, is a big challenge every week. Do you not get the like little buzz of satisfaction when you look at say? the weekend sporting schedule and there's manageable levels of sport yes. on TV. Sorry, that's a big part of my life. The tyranny of the weekend kickoff schedule. Well, the pressure's and different. There are you. certain weekends where I'm saying, that is going to work out beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. And most weekends you're saying, oh no. I would argue <laughs> and that's that not going to add up. I would argue it's very different for you. I will see the big events of the weekend and I will be on top of everything else that happens, but I don't necessarily have to see everything. Yeah. I'd argue you don't either, but that's the way you do things and it's probably why you're as good as you are. But me and Arthur need to be just on top of things. I'd say, Colm, you're probably in a similar boat. Joe needs to watch them forensically. It's a different question for you than it is for us. Yeah. And I think that's. I think there's a lot that goes into having to watch three rugby games plus... <laughs> Rugby's the killer. Plus, like, well, a couple Friday of... Friday night... Everything, well, like even weekend, like. even d- it's it's just non-stop, and even yeah, Friday night. But then even this weekend, I I stuff going on, and so having yeah. to watch Ulster La Rochelle was a disaster. Yeah, but I don't have BT on my TV, so I can only stream it. So I had to watch it there and then. So uh, significant things had to be parked to watch. <laughs> and after at half time, twenty nine nil, I was like, well, I I can go, can't <laughs> I? I'll just watch it for a minute, and then they made the comeback, and it yeah. was the full. You thing. require understanding people in your life. Oh, big to time. do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, like the night off would be Friday night. So. I uh, I curse the screen when there's a big match on Friday nights because I please I just don't want to watch sport tonight. What's your night that you like to unwind with your schedule? It's kind of hard for you. Isn't Thursday's it? good. Thursday. Although I do the news rounds at half seven, but I don't have to watch anything afterwards. So, so I do, thir- sorry, I never. I, so I don't watch Europa League. That's what I'm, I that, give that myself was my that next off. question. The conference and Europa League. <laughs> yeah, I give myself. We're that unlikely off. to want to be not being shown in the Malloy House on or Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday sometimes, yeah. So you have no Saturdays because of the Sunday pay per view and the Sunday show. But Sunday pay per view particularly, no? Well, yeah, you got you can't just come in Sunday and be like, "What happened yesterday?" Yeah, yeah. I often be thinking of that, that Sunday morning for you. Your your question well, on was me, huh? Do you like sport as much as before you worked in it? Yeah, is interesting. I I feel like I've changed massively in that. The reason I got so big into NFL mm. about I was watched it from about maybe oh about from like two thousand say right. Yeah. But I really got into it in a big big way around oh seven oh eight oh nine, and it was when I started working full time in here and it was because it was something I wasn't really doing for work. Football, yeah. GA, and I think golf might have been golf a little crept bit up on for me you. for that reason. Yeah. yeah. Uh, football, GA, rugby became a little bit work. I don't find that anymore. I feel like I've passed that point and I'm probably as into those three sports as I've ever been. Yeah. But there was a point where NFL was my that was the sport that I used to have before I worked in See, sport. I would you find know? I watch every pretty if I'm at home, I watch every sporting occasion with my laptop. And even if I'm out sometimes, I'll watch and make, make notes on the phone. So that yeah. instantly changes. Whereas with golf initially, I didn't. So it was almost like a release. But like the wider point, definitely, I mean, I wouldn't say this too often or, or too regularly. I'll say to the slight tangent family who are, uh, you know, 
listeners and you guys. Uh, like there's definitely, and I've got a date in mind, there's a shelf life in terms of how long I can do this because oh. it's just unsustainable because there's too many hours outside of the working week. And it's not like it's one sport, it's multidiscipline, so it never stops. So yeah, I, I like long term, this ain't, does not happen. No, no chance. <laughs> just can't, I go five you know. hours without checking my phone, I'm fearful that something massive has happened in the world of sport. That's an anxiety. Mm. I'm on holidays, that still exists. I feel like there are ways around that. So say like this week now, I definitely tailored my weekend. We were going to see Santa with the kids. It's the first time we did it. We'd been sick all week. We weren't sure we were even going to make it. But it was very much a, you know this has to be in the morning because the World Cup final is on. And to be honest, Munster is on before that. And I kind of want to be seeing So we were back at home by one o'clock and I watched the Munster game in the World Cup final. But... Did you feel duty then to watch Munster or did you want to watch Munster? No, Munster was a choice. So that's different. Uh, I did feel like I needed to at least see one or two of the rugby games and I hadn't seen, I didn't want to watch the Leinster match. I knew it was going to be a shambles. I have that, I'm actually, I'm okay with those decisions that I don't have to watch crap still. But I did, no, I would work a final, I wouldn't have missed regardless of whether I'd ever worked it or not. But But what I'm saying is I do... I can make decisions where it's like, you know what, I just don't, this is, if it's important for work, it kind of also needs to be a little bit important to me as well. Mm. Now, most of those times, there isn't really a conflict in those two things. No. I don't really watch the majority of URC games. URC is the I know what's happening yeah. in them and I'll follow it. And if, if there's something that needs catching up on, I will catch up on it. But I don't watch them because as much as I would be interested if I had no life, but I, with two kids and stuff, I have to make decisions. Well, I was, Sorry, and the, I can't do it. Like, I, I, find, I find URC a big ask, and I find early stages of GEA a massive ask as well. Yeah. These putrid games <laughs> that have no consequence for the business end. Mm. You know, because you'd watch Kerry early in the championship to get a look at Kerry, but if you're watching two teams that aren't going to do anything and the game's awful, that's like a big waste of your evening. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a Saturday. <laughs> well, well, that's I find that's tough going, yeah, yeah, to be yeah, honest. Specialised stuff, stuff comes yeah. in. But it, that's where yeah. people like Tommy and stuff have that covered with football pod. Yeah. You don't need to do it. We don't need to do it. To a degree. To a degree. Like, you know what I mean? You're you right, you're right. We don't. We don't. You, don't. you can catch up. You can get, people yeah, yeah. can get that elsewhere if they're so inclined. Yeah. Having a young family must help with like ruthless decision making around watching sport. It changes, and this is, look, I mean, <laughs> yeah. There's uh, there's two married men and a and a and a as good as in the room with me that like that that don't have oh with you with you sorry and I have um and I I do have two young kids and it changed everything so nearly three years ago the how you watch sport how you consume sport or whatever changes overnight I remember trying to watch the Super Bowl when Julia was two or three weeks old and falling asleep all night during it and not having a clue who won it the next day whereas three weeks before the NFL playoffs were really important to me, you know? And so it's not that it becomes less important over time, obviously, when things get less hectic in the, after those first few weeks, but your, your ability to just sit down and watch. I watched the World Cup final while feeling guilty because my daughter was sitting beside me watching YouTube videos on my iPad. She was grand. She was grand, but that World Cup final went on for like 15 hours. Yeah. So uh, when it was supposed to only be two. So it, it just changes everything. And I think people will understand that, like, you know, that there isn't as many choices you can make anymore. I'm conscious this conversation might seem increasingly indulgent, but it was in response to an email who was asking about our habits. So that's a general sense of where we all are, I think. We're going to take a very short break and part two of a slight tangent on the way. Just one second. Off the ball on News Talk. Christmas on News Talk. What's your favourite Christmas song? My favourite would be Backdoor Santa. There are many versions of that song, though I favour the uh, uh, Clarence Carter one. For a long time, I would have said E17, Stay. This is a hill I will die on, that that is a Christmas song. My favourite is Wonderful Christmas Time by Paul McCartney. From the second it starts to the second it ends, it just sums up the buzz of Christmas. The Little Drummer Boy by David Bowie and Bing Crosby. I have to say, it brings a lump to my throat every time I hear it. Happy Christmas. From everyone in News Talk. Galvin Tullamore, making Christmas special since 1949. Galvin Tullamore. 
Give the gift of getting together this Christmas with the Press Up gift card. One card, unlimited experiences. Date night at Stella Cinema. Luxury hotel breaks at the Dean or Glasson Lake House. Cocktails at Vintage Cocktail Club. World famous wings at Elephant and Castle. Whether they're a movie buff, luxury hotel lover, or impossible to please foodie, the Press Up gift card opens the door to endless experiences and special memories. Buy online for instant delivery at pressup.ie. This Christmas, Sky VIP has gifts for everyone. We put a stocking full of festive movies and shows on Sky Showcase. This is a surprise. Cozy up on the couch and choose a movie in Sky Store. Great. Share the love with free Christmas calls. Hello. And there's even more. Get six months of Apple TV Plus on us. Merry so from all of us to all of you, Merry Christmas from Sky VIP. Available throughout December. Apple TV Plus auto renews at €6.99 per month. Further terms apply. See sky.com. A Christmas gift card for the five-star Glenlow Abbey Hotel and Estate. But what to choose? An indulgent Galway getaway? <sighs> a round on Glenlow's championship golf course? Afternoon tea and falconry? Or dinner in the award-winning Pullman Restaurant, set in two original carriages from the Orient Express? The luxury is theirs, the pleasure is yours, and the gift is Glenlow Abbey Hotel and Estate. Visit GlenlowAbbeyHotel.ie. Off the ball. This is News Talk. You're welcome, Mac. A slight tangent is well underway now. We have Arthur O'D. We have Mick McCarthy. We have Colin Buig. First time, last time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I know it's city season. It is. Have Not you at all. So far, Colin? You've been oh, yeah, very, been... very strong. Yeah, I yeah I don't like on like I don't like on the air reviews like because now like I have to do the second half of the show yet and then you'll be like oh thanks thanks for coming on that was great yeah no, uh, no look Will will be back soon everyone don't worry this is just a little no, holiday you be, treat you can be on the road absolutely mm. okay I'm gonna try and blitz through several emails if I can uh, we mentioned this in the news round so very briefly you would have heard this so this has been in your subconscious to be fair to you give you a chance at something uh, with a bit of prep I love the segment and I look forward to it every week. A few weeks ago, you discussed underrated Irish sports people, which was a nice conversation. My question is, what is the most overrated Irish sporting achievement? Jack. <laughs> it's oh, I don't. We're back it, putting people on the spot. Yeah, it, no, like, I actually, I felt like you were going to ask me this and I was walking through. By the way, town is mental during the week and I haven't been in town middle of the week in a long time at this time so that's just the note I was like taken it back Christmas by week, it. It's the 20th of December. I know but I'm used to just calm in the morning so that's one thing so trying to listen to the at show. At 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning? Huh? At 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning it's when you're coming more, in? It's more the break okay, after okay, the okay. show. It's very nice out there. Um, I was like well it's such a small country so I was like all of it's an achievement because we've like it's yeah. a tiny country so yeah. therefore it has to be anything insular so I actually didn't think it was too outrageous to name Hurling because like a quarter of the country plays it. Yeah, I, and, it's, and I was trying to think because my mind went to individual athletes, but obviously that's a mammoth achievement because we're a tiny country. And we shouldn't be achieving that much. Yeah, I, I must. You know what that is? Though. That's that's Cork not winning all Ireland in quite a while. <laughs> that's not even not even joking. Hundred percent, that's Cork. That's no, his, that's his Cork bias that they no. haven't won in a long time. I, I think the hurling's a fair answer because, and even football to an extent, because we're talking overrated. Like it gets so much coverage and so much attention. It really doesn't, though. The fact of the matter is, it gets eight 16, counties coverage yeah. because the rest of the co- rest of the country doesn't get coverage. There's no rating. Nobody looks at it. Nobody give it hairs at all. I think I it agree. can't oh, possibly be overrated. That's that's not true. Sure. You're, 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 you're you're in the rest of the country. No, no, it's no, 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 no. But nobody, but nobody true. cares about any hurling. No, we, like we won't cover anything below a certain level in hurling, just out of the basis that there's not the consensus that people will be interested unless it's something extraordinary. Mm. You're could possibly be overrated. You're spot on. I'm talking about winning the All Ireland. As an overrated achievement. For sure, and I'm not. It's not to tee it up, but with winning the All Ireland. Sort a book about uh, winning the All Ireland, Ireland, Ireland and hurling. Look, obviously, is, Limerick hurling can't get enough attention right now. No, but winning the hurling is winning the All Ireland hurling is on a par again with winning not on, whatever else talk about achievement, but in terms of the numbers, in terms of the Rugby World Cup. In ter- if you want to even talk about the FIFA, the Football World Cup. Yeah. There's only there's been like what eight winners since 1930 or something. It's that small. Yeah. It's a very exclusive club that can do it. I know theoretically more can do it, but it doesn't happen. And there's a big enough pattern of things to show that. Yeah, I think the size of the competition isn't that important. I think the point they're making, though, is that there's a, it's the size of the playing base within, yeah. you know, eight, eight. It's actually ten. It's nine, right? It's nine currently counties. 
I think that could get to ten, but it's nine. All right, it's the not eight. It's not seven. Monster. Certainly every not time six. I go down, every time I go home, it's actually the one bit of feedback I get when I go home is you don't do enough hurling. Because I, I like Cork, Munster, the vast majority, with the ex- exception of one county, hurling mad like. And even North Kerry is big into hurling. You see, I don't, I don't think that's anything to do with your point. I think, I, I, I think. I don't want to. It's not that I'm defending the the pick of hurling, which both of you have made now, and then getting defensive about it. It's like, it's, <laughs> it's not about how big a deal it is. It's about whether, as an achievement in itself, we possibly overrate it. But yeah. I, I don't actually agree with that. I don't think we do overrate it. I think that what it gets is coverage because of interest level, and because of the what it means to the. Counties, yeah, I just, fans, uh, players, etc., mm. in, involved, and the well, love of the sport. Look, the meaning is absolutely. I don't think massive. there's anything wrong with that. You know, sorry, if we're if we're talking about what means the most to people, then I wouldn't dream of mentioning GA. But if we're talking about achievement and how we rate it, then I think yeah, that, that emotion but, spills over okay, to overrating but, it. But do you think that we get into like? So, we were talking a little bit about this earlier about David Clifford and what he would have to do to win. Um, sports person sports person of the year right yeah. and then he did literally everything you could do in Gaelic football I'm, I'm stepping on your point Arthur sorry about this but it just it just kind of came up here yeah. but it, uh, I was saying it's like how many like uh, Gaelic football is a mainstream sport in Ireland right hurling is a mainstream sport in the nine counties that we're talking about if yeah. not the entire of Ireland but like we laud the international achievements of minority sports, mm-hmm. of sports that very few people participate in worldwide. Okay. So I think sometimes our, our, our desire to not be insular and to say GA achievements don't really mean that much because you're just, it's, it's only uh, competitions among groups in the island of Ireland is actually diminishing in a way that I think is unfair. I'm not going to name any sports or, or achievements or anything like that, but we do lo- anything that anybody does anything internationally is seen as an incredible work actually, but how many more people are actually participating at a high level than they are in a game that is played on such in huge numbers in Ireland? Okay. You know, now I'm not, again, the, 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 it, it still will be more, yeah. but by how much, I suppose, is what I mean. David Clifford had to be the best player, is the best player in his village, he's the best player in, in Fossa, he's the best player in East Kerry, he's the best player in Kerry, he's the best player in Munster, he's the best player in Ireland. He can't do any more in the game. No, he can't. He's at true every level, yeah, you know what I mean? He can't. It, it's unfortunate, actually, I sometimes think, for somebody like Clifford, that there is a sporting ceiling on him. Yeah. Whereas Glenn Whelan, for instance, there's no ceiling and he got to, you know, he kept going, kept going and, and you know, reached this amazing level. And you wonder, so, um, like Clifford, how high could he get on the international stage? We'll never know. Mm. Whereas I think for in other sports, it's it's you literally go all the way, you know, you go to infinity almost, go to messy levels. Yeah. So with Clifford, you never know. Mm. And it's no, unfortunate. You know. uh, Long time listener, first time email her. Anyone, I love anyone who's a long time first time. Uh, I felt compelled to communicate my feelings via email. And I thought, goodness me, this is going to be serious. My major bugbear at this World Cup so far, the lack of players with their shirts tucked in. It seems as, is, as if every player has opted for the long shirt. I spend the first 90 seconds of each game like a hawk, frantically searching in the hope that one player has chosen to stand out. So much like Messi, this emailer. Uh, spends the first 90 seconds of a game surveying mm-hmm. the field. Uh, I have uh, glimpses Brief glimpses of hope as the camera pans to substitutes ready themselves to join the fray. They all momentarily took their shirt in. That's true. <laughs> and then it never lasts. And he uh, goes on to point out FIFA guidelines, which say that players should maintain a tidy appearance throughout the match. Shirts tucked into shorts and socks pulled up. Would love to hear the lads' thoughts on this, says Barry. Lee Cattermall is somewhere in the Netherlands saying, Preach, Joe, preach. Really? Lee Cattermall Kieran is the Tierney. great man for a talking, in Kieran Tierney, Kieran Tierney is another in and looks weird and he in fact you Tierney. stand out now you stand out yeah, it's the to- opposite was Julian Dix in the 90s yeah he it's was totally tucked out I, mean, I was chatting to Damon Delaney about this and he remembers like none of them want to do it tuck in their shirts I think it's an Why awful look are you look. talking to Damon Delaney about this what, say why <laughs> he's a man of the world uh, it just Damien. came up we were weirdly talking about when this had changed <laughs> and I was saying did it change what, what, what did you do when you first started and he he, he talked about being on the pitch and Untucking his jersey and looking around to see anyone going to say anything? He was amongst the first, I think. And no one said anything. And he was like, oh, that's much cooler. And so he was maybe a, even a trendsetter. 
Well, he was in that Leicester team with thing, wasn't he, with Martinez? He, look, he's, <laughs> <there you laughs> so jerseys are too tight now. There's no good. need for them to be tucked in. I think they look weird when they're tucked in. So it's like Kieran Tierney looks like he's got a big arse because his shorts are pulled up too high. It, it looks weird. It's not suitable to the current kits. However, I remember seeing a video not that long ago, a couple of years ago, of like United's dressing room after one of the Champions League. It was around the treble time. I think it might have been now even after the Juventus game. And Keane is in the dressing room with his shirt tucked out. And it's down to his knees. Yeah. yeah. And it looks ridiculous. But it's obviously just because they're getting they're, they're all in the shower and stuff like that. He's just and it's just like, right, you had to tuck in back then. Well sorry, but the jerseys were crazy back then. They were very yeah, that's my point. The yeah, jerseys that Ireland wore in the campaign for the two thousand and two World Cup look like rugby jerseys. Do you know that it's the it's the jersey they wore when Roy Keane scored against yeah, Portugal? Yeah, it's a the, the towel the goal. style jersey. Was, yeah. How did they the run around collar. with that? Well, and, and the problem with that jersey was to like envelope the whole monstrosity. You had to pull your shorts up very high to get any kind of tightness in the jersey. Yeah. So Roy Keane had his shorts far too high for a lot of his career. <laughs> Not a great look. <laughs> I'd agree. Yeah, uh, but I. I Look I, just, look, I get worked up about the smallest of things. This is too small. This is a strange one for me. I'm <laughs> oh, Arthur, I can't. <laughs> Who tucks in the jersey? Next email. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bit biased reading this, but it caught my eye. Am I the only one who can't stand this iteration of Messi and the Argentina team? Also, why doesn't Messi get scrutinised the same way other hugely talented players do? He's found guilty of defrauding the Spanish government of hundreds of millions of euro, yes millions, plays for a Qatari-funded team, acts as a Saudi ambassador. Journalists and TV pundits love the easy targets of Ronaldo and Neymar. They gloss over the indiscretions and questionable decisions of the saintly Lionel Messi. Not to mention this idea he gets kicked all around the pitch. Opposition players can't touch him without the referee diving for his whistle. This probably isn't even as much of an issue uh, I have as I have with Messi as with how the media treats many of these uh, flawed characters so differently. What are your opinions? Kind regards, Jer. Jer, I could have written that email myself. I have been saying it all tournament. I'm bored of myself saying it, so I will kindly bow out at this stage. People love a nippy flair player, first of all. People love a kind of, kind of an underdog feel because physically he's not at the same level as others around him. And secondly, with Messi, uh, despite everything that was said there in that email, and I've heard you said this recently in a lot of shows, and I couldn't help, you actually persuaded me otherwise what I thought about Messi, about the Saudi links, and I was like, yeah, that's a pretty good point. But people love an unassuming, yeah. quiet person who goes about their business to an extraordinarily high level versus his buddy Cristiano, who lets everybody know well, how I great always, he is. I always felt the RTE panel were against Ronaldo for as long as they possibly could be because of his character. Because that was the first iteration of Ronaldo, mm. which in their eyes was everything that was wrong with modern football, flash. which yeah. was the flash, step overs, right or left wing, doesn't cross it in in time, Ruud van Nistelrooy complaining about him. And then eventually he became this ruthless goal machine that the world had never seen the likes before. Yeah, it was undeniable then. Undeniable. Messi for me is obviously the natural flair, it's incredible. Uh, Ronaldo is just so ruthless and it's um, it's not a thing of beauty but his ambition is is seductive to many and that's why he's so influential because to Be so many people. Beckham is amongst the most maligned figures at this World Cup for a very similar... I don't think that'll last. No, it probably won't last but... Did you not see the thing even during it which I was quite surprised by was the FA that put it out no. of when he was meeting with like Saka and yeah, Southgate yeah, yeah. and all this stuff and it was that was as By if way, as an aside how nice was Saka? I, like, I was surprised Saka he was quite as starstruck oh my god right. is it Bex I'm so sorry could I get a photo <laughs> yeah. it's the nicest thing I've ever seen so like they'll, they'll continue to use like, everyone knows I say, Bacayo, Beckham's there to wash his brand yeah. which you guys like yeah. it's that, the other way around that, but, is... but Beckham amongst the most maligned figures of this World Cup Messi amongst the most beloved no but you're 100% like there's that email is word perfect okay your points are word perfect right and I'm one of the people that can't help it. I'm living and dying by Messi winning the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, we had an email in yesterday saying is, because you said on the news round that Di Maria was just a rumour. For, uh, for <laughs> <laughs> Somebody <laughs> asked if that was the <laughs> best <laughs> insult that we'd ever had on the show. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone yeah. tweeted me and I was like... And actually, as, as Arthur was pointing out to me in real time, he was mad at the match in this final. Yeah, he was brilliant. busy, Copa America, Champions League. He has let he has been quiet in big games a lot in his career. I know, How many I big games have you watched him in? 
Ah, Di Maria, he's about 40. I've watched him about 100 big games. He's been good a lot of games. He, like, come on. Can I ask you something on Messi? I, I have yeah, to say... Let's yeah, get back to the Messi thing again. I have always found him... Because Kenny Cunningham said it, and I was like, I totally bloody agree with you. You know what? We were talking about Messi, and Kenny was saying, oh, for me, it's Maradona. Connect with Maradona spiritually, emotionally, on a, on a humane level. Whereas he said, Messi, for me... Maradona was... Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I know. Maradona but, wasn't a good guy. No, true. But he said of Messi, and I sort of did agree with this, that... Even as a person, he's just so remote that he's like detached. Yeah, it's hard to actually but, love him. And this is where I'm coming from: is that you don't need to love him, and that's why the Saudi stuff, right? It's gross. Yeah. I completely agree with you. I I have no comeback to what you're saying. It is you're right. It's gross. Even the guitar stuff. There's a the, the you know all the way through his career, there's been things like this. It's messy. He's like ugh, whatever. But because we don't know anything about his character, all we uh, like all of that stuff is almost irrelevant because he has no personality. He has no figure. Yeah. He is a footballer. Yeah. And for me, I, I don't know. I'd actually love to talk to people about this because there's people who are a lot more uh, outspoken and uh, on these matters. I would say these like social yeah. matters than I am or than any of us in this room are, who are also, who talk about Messi like he is God mm. and have a seemingly blind spot for this. And it, the, again, the email is perfectly right in what they say. But I'd love to even know why on a psychological basis. But for me, I think it's like, this guy came into our lives when he was 16. That's 19 years ago, right? And from there, it was like, this guy has the potential to be something great, to this guy has the potential to be the best player in the world, to this guy is the best player in the world, to is this guy the best player of all time, to this guy probably is the best player of all time, yeah. right? This is the journey we've lived with him. And on that time, he played for a Barcelona team that were beautiful. He is the most beautiful footballer I have ever seen. He makes me enjoy football in a way that other players have never done. That nobody has ever made me feel like Leo Messi watching him. I'm sure Maradona and Pele were as good. This isn't a comparison. I just didn't watch them in real time. And I didn't watch two, three hundred games in their career. As you, Well, maybe a maybe hundred games of Leo Messi's career. And then to crown it off by winning that World Cup is, is almost as much our story. <laughs> you know, I thought that sounds ridiculous. But it's like that journey of following this guy for his whole career and loving him as a footballer and for him to have that moment. It's almost, it's about Messi, but it's not about the person. It's about the footballer and it's about that journey yeah. of the last 20, 20 years. And that's just the best way I can explain it. I don't know if that even makes sense, but that's just, I've been thinking about it a good bit for the last couple of weeks. And I, all I know is that the raw, emotive, non-logical part of me that's watching on Sunday really, really wanted that to happen and wanted him to be at the center of it. And, wanted, and, was dis and when, when Coleman took the ball off him, that led to that amazing goal for Mbappe, and that should have been this incredible moment of football that Mbappe scored that goal, my first thought was, oh God, if Argentina lose this, Messi just lost the ball under no pressure, something he's never done, that's going to be the narrative. Yeah, okay. You know, so I don't know where that all comes from, but I'd be interested in people smarter than me to tell me more about it. Yeah, no, it's your prerogative. Arthur, I want to come to a point you made on uh, Jimmy Barry Murphy in a second, just very briefly, because I want to get to a few more emails if I can. So that was the messy one. Oh, yes. So uh, this is definitely a hardcore fan because he writes, Hi, Joe and team. This greeting will either guarantee this email gets read or it definitely doesn't. I have to read that intro. Uh, he has several questions. On the World Cup as a spectacle he said leaving aside the fact it shouldn't be played in Qatar has this been the most entertaining World Cup whilst also, whilst also being one of the worst in terms of quality uh, the first two quarterfinals yesterday oh, so this was written a while ago first two quarterfinals yesterday were poor uh, made up for with Edge of the Sea drama there haven't been too many great games throughout however 27 teams did have something to play for in their last group game has that ever happened before I was flicking over and back between the games throughout and actually missed out on most of the excitement in the Spain group so are we saying this was bad on quality, high in excitement? I thought it was pretty good on quality too, no? No. There are questions it answered. was high quality. It's impossible to judge. The game has never been better. The quality yeah, of football has never, ever been better. I agree. Ever. Like what we sacrificed is, you know, maybe one or two more characters that we'd like to see in the game and kind of the more human aspect. Actually, when you were talking about Messi there, Mick, and I was like hanging on your word, every word because I agreed with all of it. And at the same time, I was thinking, 
I still kind of prefer Maradona because he had that human flawed aspect to him outside of the yeah, various yeah, parts yeah, of his yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. But like his story is fascinating to me. And I think with modern football, you sacrifice that because it's so regimented and everyone's at the same level of fitness and generally the same level of skill. So I thought this World Cup represented that completely. Yeah. It's a horrible question to ask. Quality them. isn't as important as we make out to be. Like, it's in terms of what, how quality. good a World Cup is. It's, yeah, it's good. So there's no great teams anymore, blah, blah, blah. I was saying this to you earlier, Arthur. Like, it's like, it's about competitiveness and it's about drama. Yeah. And it's not about the quality doesn't matter. It's about what like it's it's about the clash. It's about styles. All these things they're way more important. General quality has never been better either. That's I the agree other with thing. that. Yeah, but again, I just think but, if it wasn't, it no, nobody ever appreciates anything that's just happened ever. No, ever. That's what Richie was saying. Two thousand six World Cup tea last night in the news round. But it was like it's because of where you were in your life at the time. Mm. Like twenty eighteen was for me unremarkable that World Cup completely because I was working normally in Dublin that summer. Twenty fourteen was special because I lived in Australia at the start and I came home with Ireland at, to Ireland at the end. 2010 I was doing my finals in college 2006 I was working my first job ever what's in school been, what's been good about your life in 2022? well I don't know yet I haven't, I haven't been able to review it because it's just finished if you had to guess though um, I was on honeymoon in January I got Covid in Mexico so I stayed a week longer Yeah, but for the World Cup I'll tell you you were finished work at 10 o'clock every day <laughs> yeah huh? You are finished work at 10 o'clock every day and you were home watching four oh, World well, Cup whoa, games. whoa that's not true that was I mean if you were in the office you would have seen <laughs> that, that was wasn't it. true at all that's why you think town was especially busy because you're out the door at half nine uh, every incorrect. morning. Correct, totally. Uh, Richard continues, by the way. When are we going to get over what a con- uh, what a country or player has done to us in the past? We laugh at Peter Shilton still going on about the hand of God. We can't get over Henri. Is there a statue of limitations on this? Is it 25 years on- or until we qualify for the World Cup or what? The Henri I thing. think it's a bit small time being still annoyed at Henri. Henri and worrying about Fra- and not being anti-France because of a sort of different team. Yeah, you know, I could care less about the Henri handball. You couldn't care less? Yeah, I'm, I'm over it. Honest, oh, it's, I could not care it's less a, about it. It's a good story in Irish sport and history. Like the, oh, yeah, amazing not, story. Like, it's an oh, amazing yeah, no. story. I have literally zero ill will towards Thierry Henry. The only issue maybe, he shouldn't have sat down beside Richard Dunn. Oh, all that. Wasn't was, great. What was he doing? But player handball in, in match is totally fine by me. But also, like, don't no like, problem. I hate the French football team from now on. No. You know, it's like, come on. Uh, <laughs> Arthur, there was an amazing tribute to Jimmy Barry Murphy on the RG Sports Awards. You wanted to make a point. It was just so rare. It was the late Hall of Fame entry thing, and it's it's very rare. With the, it was obviously because of hey, how many All Irelands he won in the business, and there's relatively more footage of him available, I suppose. Yeah. So as opposed to maybe someone who was less um, from a less vaunted county, but it was just it was so well put together. It was so like three and a bit minutes of like him winning at football, winning at hurling, and then managing the hurlers to an All Ireland. Right. Yeah. It was great. It was just like a, as a constructed thing. It was just class, and you saw a little bit of it today. Like yeah. it was so well done. What song was it? It was like 20th century, century boy by T Rex into something else, into yeah. something else, and it was class, right? Yeah. And I went watching it live, and just like I couldn't believe it was kept going. I was delighted that it was still going, mm. and I, it's just it's kind of a tied in with that Clifford point and like what I suppose GEA figures within this larger scale have to do to get their dues, and it just is that case where it's like it was. It was I think it was so brilliant because it was so rare. Yeah, that it's like we don't really. Like so, Lake Regale is a great example of how it can be done well, but that's not mainstream for no. a very obvious reason, and that's just the reality. But I know people watch. I know you can watch, it, and I've watched a load of them, and that's great. But it doesn't cross over to the mainstream for that reason. I found myself thinking when you mentioned it that it, it's strange we don't have an Irish Sporting Hall of Fame. I know that uh, RTE have started one. I don't know who's yeah. in it, but like any state smaller or bigger than us uh, across the states would have an official sporting hall of fame just some way it's high time there's a republic of ireland or even island of ireland sporting hall of fame and even the ga have something i suppose something approaching it in terms yeah. of it. like it doesn't there's there's different things in crow park and these teams of millennium century whatever but we, there should be an official one shouldn't there should be something because we don't i mean we already statistics thrown out the window we have no proper database for that or anything which is just a shambles really and then it just kind of comes that so many, and maybe I'm coming from a slightly biased point of view of someone who's been very focused on one area and one county and then the less vaunted people in that county. So you break down, you find all these stories. But it just doesn't, it's not something we, you don't want to spend your whole life nostal- being nostalgic and looking back. But at the same time, we don't have, as you're saying, a centre point for this, some place. Official one. An official thing where these figures can be celebrated. Because next year it'll be, it's not going to be a GA probably won't be a GA player again who's celebrated next year so we wait for two, three, four years till someone else gets put in and you get to you know they get their moment but it's just I, it just it, it irritates me a little bit because we do kind of we take it a little bit for granted whatever's kind of happening now Okay 
Yeah. Can I give you an example of something that, that bugs me with what he's talking about? The Golden Jubilee, or, you know, the, the, the 25 years that they do on the pitch. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah. Empty finals. stadium. It's yeah. done earlier and earlier because the warm ups, the pageantry. I was, and there's no, like, there isn't like a video. Like, that that's a video fantastic package, point. That's that a fantastic video point. package yeah. for, that, for those 25 year teams to remind us of who they are and what they did and what, how they made us feel mm. 25 years ago. As opposed to, Anthony Daly was on TV this year in a, like, to do the All Ireland final in a new suit that he got and kind of mentioned that he did. And it's like he went out and waved in front of an empty stadium. It used yeah. to be with, bigger, with, didn't with it? A, it? It was on TV and yeah. Michal and Mara used to do TV. it, but even then it wasn't big enough. Yeah. Even then it was still just a walk and a wave. And when you're in the stadium, that the, you're, you're, if you're in the Cusick stand and you're looking at the Hogan, it feels very far away, mm. you know what I mean? But it's not even on TV anymore, it's yeah. nothing. And it's such a nod to history without honouring history. And, but to be fair, I think it's, it's really well-intentioned. I really do think it's well-intentioned, yeah. to be fair to the GA. And not every sport does something like that. Maybe just execution could be a bit better. Yeah. I it's a tradition um, that they won't drop but aren't putting any effort into. Maybe not. But I, I do feel like the people at the top are, are very well-intentioned about it. and would we, They grew up watching it as well that, and everyone likes it. Yeah, but would they, would they take your feedback to make it more prominent and in people's consciousness? They might, you know, that, that, I, I imagine someone in Shorty approached them about this. Yeah. Shorty. Uh, I omitted Jimmy Barry Murphy from my Cork Mount Rushmore two and a half years ago and who, it was, who, that was the big, who, most who was contentious. Roy Keane. Roy Keane, who's think? Uh, it's uh, Roy Keane and Sonia for yeah. sure. Erwin. See, I would have felt. Oh, no. I would have thought he felt he had to had ring G A contingent there. G I had one. Chrissy ring. Yeah. And the other. Oh come on! Who would he be afraid to leave out? <laughs> David Myler. <laughs> <laughs> what sport? Rugby. Oh, Raj. It has to be shorty, no? No. Because a lot of people were saying, uh, Raj, no, Jimmy Barry, yes. Jeez, it's impossible. Ah, oh, but Raj on the international stage. World class. See, this is back to international stage again. World class. Yeah. Jimmy Barry Mark means more to Cork. He, Jimmy Barry's a victim of his own uh, because I, I would say Good that Jimmy point, Barry and Ring is a, there's very few counties that have two people, two GA people that are on that level, and they do, and that's just a fact. I think, and then Roy Keane and Sonny, there should be five on the Cork. Roger Mark. so Cork, and he's lived in France for a long time, and he's still so Cork. We're just proud of him. Did any, so did any party fair, you consider yeah. like is the Ring myth overdone? Uh, no, I just think it's a huge part of my upbringing with yeah. Christy Ring. Uh, you can finish. Seen as your guest, we've a uh, minute and a half here. You are, I suppose, making a point we have made at times about the homogenization of how football tournaments look. No more apparent than at each World Cup. The last World Cup that looked different is probably France, certainly USA 94. Since then, all the pitches look the same, the camera angles are the same, everything's the same. Uh, so, this is um, a pity in your uh, view. You are talking about, it's a specific point, but <laughs> the, the nets, the nets. When it comes to football, I listen. I, I, me, I, like, when I saw you texted this through, I thought you're not wrong. Really, that's not the message I got back. But yeah. uh, to be fair, we were all just yeah. But I would, I'd you. be strong. Uh, I, we I would right. feel, uh, I feel very strongly about this. Filbert Street back in the day, Leicester City's nets, they were beautiful. So that's the Dennis Bergkamp famous hat trick uh, at Leicester, mm. and they went, you know, that kind of triangle shape, and there was such a lovely ping off them. So if you scored a screamer like Muzzy Izzard style volley into the top corner it would really uh, justify yeah. the beauty of the shot. The opposite was the Dell at Southampton, which made a load of incredible Matatissier goals look quite ordinary because the net was too close to the line. Bounce out. My point being is that each stadium had its kind of own individuality. No, it did. It did. And now all the goal nets are exactly the same look. Do you remember about 10 years ago, the Stoke uh, Greenkeeper? What would you call the... <laughs> Groundsman, Greenkeeper. Talk about the golf ball. You were so into golf. <laughs> Stoke produced this amazing uh, pitch pattern of circles. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, everyone's yeah. like, "Oh, that's kind of cool." And then straight away, the Premier League were like, "You have to have the pitch cut in this way and this way only." So it's, it, yeah. I think, the last decade, it's gone to another level. Yeah, God, you even used to have like small squares, big squares. I remember yeah. Villa Park used to have very small, like, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. um, I don't know what you design. I remember certain goals because of the shape of the nets. Yeah. Beckham's free kick at Anfield about 98, 99 because the triangle shape again it went in a certain way it went in kind of strangely into the stanchion yeah. doesn't happen now so this uh, on a serious Steve Staunton point, versus Manchester United perfect. the greatest sounding goal oh. in football history so it, elimin Stanford. it eliminates the various tastes that sport gave us and football gave us on a serious point like if everything looks the same it, it's harder to really stand out in your memory that's what we sacrificed but at the same time quality has never been higher Te True. the technical aspect of the game is massively high at the moment did USA 94 have like really deep nets? Isn't that yes. kind of like... Yeah, isn't that they went a back about four miles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Bring that Diana back. Diana Ross. Diana, Diana Ross. Ross. Yeah. Did Michael Jackson perform in that as well? That's no, that was Super Bowl around then. There was a daytime Super Bowl around then. He was in town, sorry. Uh, Pete's waving at us. We have to go, do we? Okay. Yes, we better go. Sorry, I'm, I'm stressing you out needlessly there. Arthur Adi, thank you very much. Cheers, Joe. It's your job to start the official Department of Sports sanctioned Irish Hall of Fame over the next 12 months. You can get on that case. Uh, no. Uh, Michael McCarthy, thank <laughs> you. Who's the new Minister of Sport? <laughs> I don't know, and the reshuffle. Who is it? I don't know. I don't know if we've got one yet. Someone who's passionate about sport, no doubt. Michael McCarthy, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Colin Pook, what a triumph. Hey. Pook. Triumph. Uh, back soon, Colin. Do a once every five, six weeks on the don't road. Don't forget to tell Jar how good it's going to be. Five or six weeks? Yeah, come in every once for one. Uh, I don't know. Like, this is a big undertaking. We'll record I'm it early in the day. In. We'll record it early in the day. Back on at 7 30 a.m. A slight tangent at offtheball.com. Review Colin's appearance, give us your thoughts, feedback, and we'll, uh, we'll forward it on to him. Now, come back. Come back. Uh, Sometime soon we'll put out the invite again. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And have a happy Christmas. That was a slight tangent.